Good morning on a cold Sunday morning. It's nearly eight o'clock, it's actually 20 to eight. And we need to talk about Cepheid variables. Cepheid variables are part of a class of pulsating stars that lie on the instability strip on the Hertzsprung Russell diagram. And they are very important because they act as standard candles. Standard candle is the term given to stars that can be used to find the distance uh, that the star is from the Earth. Now, how can we use the Cepheid variable to find the distance, particularly large distances, which is beyond uh, the measurement of parallax technique? Remember, parallax can only be used to find distances of about a hundred parsecs where the angle between the star and the Earth's average distance to the Sun is 0.01 arc seconds. Remembering that an arc second is 1 3600th of a degree. So the Cepheid variable is a large and bright star which is good because it means we can see it detected from a long way away. And to begin with, we will start with the Cepheid variable contracting. Now, you may ask, why is it contracting? Well, hold that thought because you will find out uh, towards the end of the description. So, the Cepheid variable star is contracting. And in contracting, it is converting uh, gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. So the nuclei in the star are moving faster and faster and furthermore the outer layers of the star which are composed of helium are getting closer to the core and it is the core where the pressure is high enough for the fusion to take place so as the helium in the core gets closer so as the helium in the outer layers get closer to the core it heats up and it's hot enough for the helium in the outer core to be doubly ionized that means the stripping of two electrons from the helium uh, atom and doubly ionized helium is opaque to the radiation that is produced in the core that means that the doubly ionized helium is absorbing all of the, the radiation produced in the core and of course that means it's going to heat up it also means that less radiation is escaping the star so as you look at the star you'll see oh it is at this moment in time looking dim because the doubly ionized helium in the outer core is absorbing the radiation as we said as it absorbs that radiation and as the star is in a contracted state and the outer layers are closer to the core that helium starts to heat up and as it does so it starts to convert kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy and it starts to the star starts to expand as the star expands it converts its kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. so it's losing kinetic energy that means it's cooling down and because it's expanding the outer layers are further away from the hot core so we get cooling of the outer layer and in this less hot state the outer layers can no longer be doubly ionized they can only be singly ionized and so the singly ionized helium is actually transparent to the radiation that is produced and so now much more radiation escapes the star and from looking at the star you will notice it is becoming more bright its luminosity has increased because radiation more radiation is escaping the star and less is being absorbed that causes the star to cool and as it cools it starts to contract and we are back at the beginning of the story we've now got a contracting star which is converting gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy thus heating up because the star has contracted the outer layers and now closer to the core those outer layers are the helium that we have been talking about and now the temperature is sufficient that the outer layers of helium can be doubly ionized and now the outer layers absorb much more of the thermal radiation 
and the star is back to the state where it is emitting less radiation and it will be less luminous. So we now have this cycle of increased luminosity and then decreased luminosity. And you're probably asking, well, that's all very well and good, but how does that mean that I can tell how far the star is away? Well, it just so happens that the time period, the time taken for one cycle of this increased and then decreased luminosity is related to the average luminosity of the star. Aha. So if you measure the time period, you can know the luminosity. And remember, the luminosity is the total energy emitted by the star every single second. If you remember from a previous video, the brightness that you see the star is related to the luminosity, but you need to divide by the surface area of the sphere whose radius is the distance you are to that star, the Cepheid variable in this case. So you measure the brightness from Earth, you know the luminosity because you know the period of the Cepheid variable getting brighter and darker. So we know everything except for the distance to the star, which we can now calculate, okay? So that is why the Cepheid variable is called a standard candle and it can be used to determine the distance, which is particularly useful for very large distances beyond the practical limits of using parallax technique. And it actually enabled Hubble to measure the distance to very distant stars and galaxies and then relate that to their redshift to show that the universe was in fact expanding. So make sure you understand the Cepheid variable and I will see you next time.